Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I need more of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I need more. Six set a fire. Set a fire.
in my soul that I can't contain on, that I can't control. Because I want more of you. I need more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you. I want more. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more of you. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Your name is here. Your name is here. 
secret of waiting on God. Secret. I will do quick. We're going to do welcome of guests, birthday, and also communion announcements. I will reverse that. The divine order setting. I problem be healed right now in Jesus' name. There's someone in the congregation that just started beginning to feel pain in their heart. If you are the one receiving your healing now, in Jesus' name. Amen. So while I'm doing this, Pastor Mocha come and welcome first time guests. Then we just stay. Well, that's okay. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 31. I will do this quick. Then we have other things we have to do. Let's go to Isaiah 40, 31. The topic today is that this is not some instruction I'm going to give how to receive from God. Because the Lord told me actually yesterday that a lot of people don't know how to wait on him. A lot of people think waiting is delay. Delay is from the devil. Waiting is from God. Delay is from the devil. God does not delay. God will prepare you to receive. Why God is preparing you, that means you are waiting on God, no delay. If it's delay in your life, let me know after service, we're going to take you to deliverance. No, it happens. The enemy delay. The enemy blocks. And it delay what God wants to do in our life. But waiting on God is different. There are many reasons why we wait. And that's why Isaiah 40, 31, he said, but those who wait on the Lord. When you are waiting, you are not waiting on the devil, you are waiting on God. Because God is your provider. He said, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. So waiting actually is strength. So waiting actually is you are being empowered while you are waiting. That's why it's good to wait with the right attitude. God, I don't hear you. That's why it's good to wait on with the right attitude. Waiting on God is good. There's a secret behind it. That you need to know today. Say, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. They shall walk and not wait. So, waiting on God is part of God's plan for your life. Most people don't like to wait. We like our breakthrough now. And it's good to have that kind of faith. Because some of the things that you are waiting for, you've already received them. Oh no, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. Pastor, they didn't get it. You got it. They didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. Because what you are waiting for is already received. But you don't have it. No, you didn't hear me. The Bible said when you pray, believe, you receive. There's a receiving season. And there's a having it season, which is manifestation. Whatever you are trusting God for, God has already promised you. You've already received it. You are just waiting for manifestation. And we serve a God that don't change his mind. 
No, you didn't hear me. God is not like us that we change our mind ten times in one day. God does not change his mind. So waiting is part of the will of God for our life. If God has promised you something in the realm of the spirit, it's already done. In the spirit realm, it's already done. Because faith is not in the future. Oh, no, you didn't hear me. Did you hear me again? Faith is not for the future. Faith is for now. Bible says, now faith is. Now will be. Not as be. Faith is in the now. So there's something you are trusting God for. You've already received it in faith. But you are waiting for manifestation. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Before the end of this year, you will see manifestation. I said you will see manifestations. I said you will see manifestation. If we follow the teaching and the attitude of waiting. Attitude of waiting is not complaining. Attitude of waiting is not complaining. Actually, attitude of praise of waiting is rejoicing, praising God, thanking God, exalting his name, glorify his name. When you begin to glorify his name, strength comes. Come on, somebody give him praise. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. This is my season of manifestation. I will continue to wait. And God is going to do it. Why? Because God is faithful. The God that I serve is faithful. My God is a faithful God. And I know he has not changed his mind. God does not change his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is faithful. He's faithful to me. He's faithful to you. And he'll be faithful to you. What he said he would do, he's going to do it. The devil cannot stop it. Principality cannot stop it. Power of darkness cannot stop it. Your neighbor cannot stop it. Your enemy cannot stop it. No one can stop it. I'm going to receive my manifestation between now and the end of this year. If I were you, I would be praising him. If I were you, I would be magnifying his name. Attitude of praise. Attitude of worship. That's how you receive. Somebody bless him. Somebody thank him. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him praise. I will wait. Job said. Job said. Job in the other day. He said, I will wait until my change comes. Your change is coming. Your change is here. Continue to praise God. Continue to worship God. The longer you wait, more strength will receive. The longer you wait, is because your blessing is big. The bigger the blessing, the longer the... Oh! Yeah! 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 yeah. Amen. Big blessing is coming. You've been waiting for so long. God has to prepare you for the blessing. God has to move your enemy away for the blessing. If they don't go, they won't allow you to receive. I say, now you are ready. Now God is preparing you. It's time to receive. It's time to possess. Somebody say, yeah. 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 Psalms 27, 14. He said, wait 
on the Lord and be a good courage. In other words, while you are waiting, don't be discouraged. While you are waiting, be courageous. Because you know the blessing is there. You're just waiting for manifestation. He said, wait on the Lord. When you are waiting, you are waiting on God. But if it's delayed, please see me after service. Hello, church. If it's delayed, let's talk after service. I'm going to rebuke the devil to get his hands out of your blessing. If it's delayed, it's the enemy. But if it's waiting, it's God. Because God always prepares us for what he's about to do. God will not give you what you cannot undo. God will prepare you to be able to handle it. So some of you are in the season of preparation. There's a season of what? Preparation. Amen. So Psalm 20, I will give you some point that I promise I won't preach that, I will teach it. Psalm 27, 14, wait on the Lord and be of good share. And he shall strengthen you. Do you see? Waiting produces strength. And your heart, wait, said the Lord. Strength. What kind of strength? Strength. It could be any kind of strength. But sometimes, there's a strength that you need to possess a big breakthrough. Strength. If God give you two years ago, you don't have the strength to handle it. He prepare you to what? To handle it. Are you with me? Come on, are you with me? So waiting on the Lord is part of the will of God. Joseph, who had been wrongly accused of a crime, he was in prison for a long time. Sometimes you would think God is not with him. But guess what? God is also in prison. Hello? Sometimes we only think God is only in the church or in the prayer closet. But God is there. Do you know Joseph had a dream at the age of 17? He was a teenager. And at that time, his brother jealous of him. You know the story? They jealous of him and they decided at first to kill him in order to abort his vision. In order to kill his vision. I said the other day, if God don't take my life, nobody can take my life. Nobody can take your life. Amen. The vision of God will be accomplished in your life. The plans of God will be done in your life. Even if the enemy try, all his plans will become a vehicle to get me to my destination. Do you believe? Their plan was to kill him. There was a divine intervention. And their plan was to sell him. God allowed them to sell him. He was sold to the Egyptian. He was destined to be in Egypt anyway. So the plans of the enemy become a free vehicle. So where is supposed to be anyway? Now, let me teach. There are three lies that the enemy tell us while we are waiting. Watch us for those lies. Three lies. Number one, the enemy will say God is late. And delay is winning. That is a lie from the pit of hell. God never late. There's a song that they sing on time God. Come on, do you know that song? 
Come on, you sing it. Can you sing it? And yes, he is. He might not come when you want him. But he will always on time. Our God cannot let. Because he's the creator of life and the creator of time. Our God don't need time. He existed outside of time. But he manifests in time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He created time not for him, but for us. But he's in control of time. Do you believe that God can stop time? He did it before. And he can do it again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God right now. Oh God. I have the anointing to sing today. Watch out now. Watch out. Watch out. If he did it before, he can do it again. He can stop time and do it again. Amen. Nobody can stop him. He is faithful God. Whatever he has promised, he can do it. He can overthrow the president of America and replace him to fulfill your destiny. He's able to do it. He's able to do it. He has done it before. He will do it again. He's unstoppable God. I say he's unstoppable God. He will shake nation. Shake continent. Shake the tent of the enemy. And bring his promise to pass. I declare that the will of God will be done in your life. I declare that the will of God will be done in your life. Come on, somebody shout amen. Come on, somebody shout amen. There are three lies. Watch out for those lies. Those lies. Say God is late. And delay is winning. Delay comes from the enemy. Waiting on God is always part of God's plan for our life. Number two, up, the enemy will say opportunities are passing you by. If the enemy is saying that, it's a lie. When we wait on God, we don't miss any opportunities. <laughs> when you wait on God, you don't miss any opportunities. Opportunity that has come in is to distract you, is to derail you, is to discourage you. It's not for you. When you are waiting on God, mind you, your blessing is already received. Your blessing is in the realm of the spirit. God, just wait for the timing that you are ready to receive what God has for you. Amen. So opportunity are not passing you by. Come on, someone say amen. Come on, someone say amen. Now, number three. Some of the lies that the enemy tell us. He said, no one else is waiting, only you. That's a lie. You spoke something. You know what I'm talking about. Says to everybody, they're getting breakthrough. You are not getting nothing. Amen. But I know a lot of people here are waiting for something. Come on, let me see your hand. A lot of us, I'm waiting for something too. We are waiting for something. And God is going to do it. Because we are not waiting on God. It's not delay. Delay comes from the enemy. Waiting come on God. Now, Number three, I'll give you number three. This is what the myth of this message, one of the myths of this message. Why is waiting on God important? Why? Why do we have to wait on God? Number one, waiting on God produces patience. Waiting on God. Produces is what? Patience. And patience is the fruit of the Spirit. There are nine fruits of the Spirit. One of it is what? Patience. Some of us, what we are asking God for, require to have a lot of patience. If God released that to you, 
and you don't have the patience that is required for the blessing, you cannot handle it. That's what sometimes God will delay it to create patience to come. You can't, you can't do it by yourself. You have to depend on him. Patience is a fruit of the spirit. Some of us need that patience. Waiting on God strengthens our faith. It strengthens our faith. Sometimes some of us don't have the strength to convert the best blessing from the spirit realm to the natural realm. Because one of the things faith does, it converts supernatural to the natural. So while you are waiting, God is strengthening your faith. Your faith has to be what? Strengthened. Not macho strength. Amen. No weight. I live weight too. But not that kind of strength. Your faith has to be what? Strengthened. So your faith can combat it. From the supernatural realm to the natural realm. Amen? And also, when it comes to the natural, sometimes we need patience to undo what God has given to us. Gifts. There are also nine gifts of the Spirit. There are five offices. Apostle, prophet, and so on. Cannot when God gives, we catapult you. Gifts, we catapult you. Most people, we always pray for gifts, not for the fruit. Hey, 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 hey. Sometimes, if you don't have the fruit, you cannot carry the gift. We always pray about the gift of prophetic and healing. It's good. I'd rather pray for the fruit. I'd rather pray for love. No, you don't understand me. I have to come down. I have to pray for what? For love. When I have love, love is the power of God. Love attracts God's power. But God is looking for people that have compassion on people. He's looking for people that love people. If you love people, it will give you healing anointing. It will give you miracle anointing. It will give you breakthrough anointing to bless God's people. See, this gift is not for you, it's for others. Come on, someone say patience. Waiting on God. Strengthening our faith. It's like trials. And tribulations. Trials. And I like the Sunday song today. Try me by fire. Be careful where you sing. Be extremely careful. Everybody singing, try me by fire. <laughs> try me. Oh, that's all. Try me by fire. Try me by... Do you know what you're saying? You know what you're saying? In order to purify, you have to go to fire. But a lot of people want to be purified, but they don't want to go to fire. They will sing it, fire, purify me. But when fire comes, they say, no, I don't know about this, man. I'm out. I'm out. Are you hear what I'm saying? Because the best is not in Best is right here. And for God to get the best out of you, He has to first of all crucify you. Sometimes we are in the way of God. So the best cannot come out. He has to crucify us. He has to humble us to get the best out of us. The best is there. Is there? We are called for greatness. Oh, Jesus, one amen. I said, We are called for greatness. 
We are called for greatness. But when you go to trials and God, you are waiting. God said to get the best out of you because God has hidden the best inside of you so that the enemy cannot touch it. <laughs> when time comes, he brings it out by fire. By fire. Waiting on God strengthen our faith. And like trials and tribulation, he helps us to build patience. And patience Build our character in Christ Jesus. So God is trying to get the character of Christ in you, in us. He wants to change the way we talk. He wants to teach us how to speak with season. Even though you don't see blessing, but you are declaring blessings in the midst of no blessing. You want to create that positive attitude. Nobody will say, we do not look to the things that are seen. The things that are seen, our, our temporal. We look to the things that are not seen. So this is for wedding, to, pro- to produce patience. And a fruit of the spirit. Number two, it develops our character and prepare us for our blessing. The blessing is going to come, saints. What God has promised is going to happen, saints. I know it. I believe it. Amen. But it's working on us. It's preparing us. Change our character. Thank God the character that I have years ago. I can't preach the gospel like that. Hello? Don't worry, not only you. When I'm playing, doing sport, basketball, they call me Sammy Joe. And the cartoons of gold. The moment I hear that word, my attitude changes. Sammy Joe is coming. God has to humble me. <laughs> you know what? It's not about you. It's about me, God. Who is Sammy Joe? You walk in and see the guy going on. And those days I was broke, but you know, the attitude was still there. He think got the swag, you know, Pastor Reggie. He do the swag, but I ain't got no money, but I got the swag. <laughs> I got the swag. But now, even though I don't have money, but I got Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you with me, church? Oh, Jesus. You know, you got the swag, you know, and you're so broke. You know, my Jesus. Oh, God. Even now, if I don't have money, if I don't have money, I have the anointing. I have Jesus. Oh, you have to give me seven loaves of bread and two fish. There shall be miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. The poor, the poor will eat. Hallelujah. There's a difference. Why? Let's continue. Come on. God has to humble me. God has to change my character. I shared with you before when I was in the military school, a superstar from Africa, they sent me to a military school. He didn't know what I went to. The moment I landed in New Mexico, Roswell, I was disappointed. Because when I see America on TV, I see New York. <laughs> and I see Chicago, the sky creepers, and the big money. And I went to military school. There was no five story sky creepers, nothing there. I'm serious. I was discouraged. What is this? <laughs> I asked myself, am I in America? <laughs> if I tell you what I went through, I'm going to humble me. He didn't even humble me in Africa. He humbled me in America. You know, we are used to sky. 
big building. You know that time? There's money. But over there, it's like in the place of nowhere. Ah! One day I look, I say, man, Sammy Jones here. Go. Then military school. As a recruit, they call you lat. Recruit at training. Then call me that. Call me a recruit at training. Those kids, they will say recruit at training. You know the way they call it, as if I'm a real rat. Hey, rat! So in the military, when you're a rat, if I'm going to Pastor I cannot cut corner. No shortcut. I have to go this way. I'll be marching. And you can't look around. You got to lose faith. They're trying to get your focus. I said to myself, some of us Christians, we need that kind of training. So we can focus on Jesus. You can't look around. There's so much temptation around. You got to learn how to look to the Jesus. The author, the beginning. And the author of our faith. Focus on Christ. Man, they trade out, they mess with me mentally. I have to go this way, go this way, go this way, go this way to get to Pastor Edge. I'm looking at it. God have mercy. But God was using all of this to train me, to humble me, to prepare me for ministry. That there's no shortcut. Amen. There is no shortcut. There's the law of the process, and process works. Some folks don't like process. They like to short cut. I was trained there. Look at them. And then young people will come to me. I'm much older than some of them. They look at you and say, why are you looking around? Hey, rat. One day the little guy is in high school. I'm in college. But because he's been there for so long, they look at me. He will come to your face. Go intimidate you. Hey, rat. Why are you looking around? He said, drop and give me 30. Hey. And their 30 is on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 1. 1, 2, 3, 2. 1, 2, 3, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4. So if you tell me to give 30, then I'm doing 90. Oh, the devil is a liar. <laughs> I almost quit the church, the school. A lot of people quit. They left. They left. But I didn't leave. I went there. I suffered. <laughs> I, I didn't leave. I didn't go. I stayed there. The death with me. But that's what I was created for. That's why I'm here. He's still there. If you are the one, don't get discouraged. He's still there. Don't change your way. Repent and go back. And you surely fulfill your destiny. Come on, someone say amen. Oh, I got to stop. I can't stop. But I got to stop. What are the attitudes? Expect with confidence. Even though you are waiting. Expect with confidence. Why? Because God is faithful. As you wait, as you wait, don't allow doubt. Doubt is one of the killer of faith. The expectant. Are you hearing me? Don't allow what? Doubt. While you are waiting, continue to praise God. That's one of the things Abraham did. Romans chapter 4, verse 18, 19, 20. While he was waiting on God, he was praising God. He was thanking God. And as he thanked God, he received strength. Strength to continue. Also, Sarah praising God and thanking God. And the Bible says she refused strength to conceive. Receive it. Receive what? Receive what? Strength. 
at the old age, there was no strength to conceive. But as you begin to praise God, as you begin to thank God, being expectant with confidence, God gave us strength to receive a child at an old age. Are you hearing me? I must have go to the Amen. So expect as you went, don't allow that to kill your faith. Expect God to come true because God always does. Number two, I love this. Almost there. Choose to endure to the end. Choose is a choice. But choose to endure to the end. Regardless of what you see. Regardless of what is going on. Regardless of how much you have and what you don't have. Continue to endure to the end. Do you know why? Faith move God. Complain, don't move God. Actually, crying, don't move God. Feeling sorry for yourself, does not move God. What actually moved God? Oh, shit, come on, somebody talk to me. What moved God? Without faith. So if you don't have faith, that means you can't please God. So if you have faith, that means you can please God. Endure to the end. Hebrews 12, 1. Say, let us lay aside every, every weight and sin. We saw a snare entangle us. And let us run. Let us run with endurance. And let us run with endurance. The rest that is set before us. Have an attitude that you will not give up. Have an attitude you will not lose hope. Have an attitude you will continue to serve God and continue to trust Him for what He has promised. And God will move on your behalf. Number three. I love that. Pray until something happens. Pray until something happens. If nothing happens, keep on praying. If you haven't received, keep on praying. Prayers always make a difference. Even if it doesn't, it doesn't feel like praying. How many been in that situation before you don't feel like praying? How <laughs> someone feel like I don't feel like praying? Some people say, I'm a little tired about praying this. I've been praying for a while. I'm not praying anymore. There's something we call the law of accumulation. You found that before? Some of you have it. The what? The law. Say that. The law of accumulation. What is a law? It's legal. That's what it is. That's how it goes. There's a law of what? Accumulation. Say that. Law of accumulation. You know it. What does it mean? When the content surpasses the capacity of the container, what happens? When the content surpasses the capacity of the container, what happens? Sometimes prayer is like that. Breakthrough. It's like that. Come up. Break this one. It's like that. When you read Revelation 5 8, you know what he said? He said, The prayer of the saint 
a storm. Where? Now, if you are praying for a new job, there's a certain bowl that you have in heaven. The law of accumulation says, as you pray, your prayer go to heaven as an incense. And it begins to, as you pray, it begins to fill up. If it's not full, there's no manifestation. When it's full, no devil in hell or no demon on earth and no principality in the second heaven that can stop it. Because it is a what? A law. It is a law. The devil is legal. It's not illegal. Satan cannot stop it. Principality cannot stop it. Even you, as you continue to pray, when you begin to overflow, you will not be able to stop it. It's too late. The law of what? Accumulation. Some breakthrough requires the law of accumulation. So what we do, we pray until something happens. If something begins to happen, that means the golden bowl is full and overflow. No, you did not hear me. And there's also something we call in the spirit. Pressure. In the spirit. Great matter. There's some things. One, we will not break it. Two, we will not break it. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Until something happens. I love the attitude, and I will stop. The attitude of Jacob. He said, I will not let you go. I will not let you go. All of gladness. Thank you. I'm keeping the time. <laughs> As I preach with this, God will bless you. As I teach with this, the God will bless you. They just God bless you. It was good. It was good. A lot of people gave. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. God bless you. And some people didn't know, but it's not too late. They, they always say, happy belated, right? So, happy belated seed. Amen. It's not too late. Amen. Our God is not for long time yet. Can I do this? I know we have some other things to do. How do you successfully wait on God? I have to do Number one, put your faith in God. Put your faith in God. Not in the object or your desire. Yeah, this is important. I have to finish. Please bear, bear with me. We're going to finish a little late today. Bear with me. Most of us, when we are trusting God for something, our faith is not truly in God. Our faith is in the object of the desire that we are waiting on. That's why a lot of people wait longer. Because God is trying to get your attention. He wants you to move your focus away from what you are looking for. He wants you to move it from your object. And focus on God. Don't focus on the gift. You focus on the giver. God is the giver. And that's one of the reasons it takes longer. We meditate with what we don't have. Instead of meditating on the giver. 
the provider, the king of kings and the lord of lords. The I am that I am. Our focus should be on him, not on the gift. So from today, change your focus. I know some people want to get married. Actually, I got a revelation yesterday. Some of them rushing. Take your time. You've been waiting so long. It could be true. God said, Tell me, what's that preaching this and that? Don't rush. Some of you are focusing on the man or focusing on the woman. God said, Take your focus off of the man. And off of the woman and focus on God that will make it happen. They are designed looking for man. Be careful for that. Let God bring that man and let God show you that woman. If not, you will pick a Jezebel. There's a Jezebel female and there's a Jezebel man. I see a lot of them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yours might be even looking for get a new house. Don't focus on the house. Focus on God. When you focus on God, your faith will even increase to get a bigger house. To get a bigger car. God always surprised me and my wife. I don't even worry about stuff. I just focus on him. But God surprised us. Three years ago, surprise her. He said, go to Zimbabwe. And when you get there, take as much land as you want. I'm not a citizen of Zimbabwe. I'm not a citizen of Zimbabwe. Take as much. How can you take as much? I almost cried somebody. Take as much. Take it. As much. God is my witness. As you Explain who I am. I'm not my own. When I get there, I tell people, some of them laugh at me. Now I'm laughing at them. <laughs> Go stretch our faith. And guess what I did? I went and I took as much as possible. Before I went to that place, they took me to the other place. They only had small land. I said, no, but God said, take as much. But I was not looking for land. That's my problem. I wasn't looking for land. But my focus. So from today on, if you want manifestation between now and end of the year, Shift your focus. Put your focus in God. Amen? 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 Put your faith in God. Number two, trust God with your heart. If you trust God with your heart, you'll be able to be patient and wait on Him. Fill your heart with trust. Hundred percent trust on God. And now we stop. I know time. Number three. Surrender your will to God. That's one of the reasons people waiting are still waiting, and they move from waiting to delay. God is not delaying. Now the enemy step in. Submit your will. If our will is not submitted to God, it will not happen. God has his will. We have our will. What you do, just in God for me, I believe, Proverbs is this 16, 3. Roll, go to Amplify. He said, roll your walk unto the Lord. And it will make it to be what? Agreeable to his own will. We have our own will. God also has will for us. In order for us to see manifestation, 
The first thing we do, we submit our own will unto God. Are you there? Read, read, read it for me quick. Quick, and I will okay. stop here. <clears throat> Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your works to the Lord. Submit and trust them to him, and your plans will succeed if you respond to his will and guidance. No, go to class, classic. That's just classic. There's something there. I want to show you. There we go. So, and that, that's mm. what we do. If you have a will, submit it to God. Yeah. Surrender it to God. You see what, what he's saying there. Hey, classic. I roll your works upon the Lord. Uh -huh. Commit and trust them wholly to him. Uh -huh. He will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. Person, someone that watching God all the time, God put it in you, His own will in you. So whatever will it is, roll it over to God because it's still God. So what do you say there? He will cause it to become more agreeable yeah. to His own will. Amen. Not your will. You know what I'm saying? Your will and His will. You bring it together. It causes it to be happen. Amen. So you know, not only receiving one manifestations, you receiving two manifestations. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Maybe your will is to get a three bedroom house. You roll it over to God. God say, "I got this." You asking for three, but I got five for you. Because that is the will of God. Why do I say that? God's will is always better than our will. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Come on, somebody give him praise and glory. Father, somebody give him praise and glory. We give him honor, mighty God. Yeah, we're going to do a few things. We're going to take offering. After offering, communion, announcement, and we dismiss. We'll do it quick. Come on, church. Are you blessed? Amen. Thank you. All. Thank you. We're going to do our offering. Please make sure you have the note. Make sure you have the note. I guarantee you, if you follow this, within three months, within three months, there shall be manifestation. Amen. Anybody missing something? You want me to go by it? Oh, last three. Yes, it's good. It's good. What do I have yet? Do you have it? I have to successfully wait on God. Yes. Please master that. Do it. I'm telling you, there shall be manifestation between now and the end of the year. At the end of the year. Are we ready to give? There's a scripture I want to share with you. Second Corinthians 9 7, as we're preparing our Offering. He said, let each one give as his purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Wow. Why did God love a cheerful giver? So let each one give according as he purposes his heart, not grudgingly or 
necessity. That's what God is also talking about attitude. Attitude of giving. We have to be happy, rejoice to give. For God loves chief forgiver. Why is that? Because God himself is a giver. You cannot outgive God. <laughs> it's good to give. And he loves it because he wants his children to be just like him. Just like him. Our God is a giver. Amen. If God will give himself to the world, he gave himself. It's not stingy. Huh? We don't stand a stingy God. Thank you. We serve a loving God, a giving God. I see unconditional love in God. I give. You see that? No, you didn't see it. Do you see it? No, you didn't see it. God, I mean, come on, some of us, sometimes we have $100 bills and we have $10 bills. We don't give 100 We give what? Come on, let me talk to you. You give what? Sometimes you give the smallest. <laughs> you give the smallest. When you hear that bill, hundred dollar. When you saw that, you put down fifty. <laughs> Come on, be real. You put down. No, I, I, no, I ain't giving that. Fifty. Twenty. Then you take what? The one dollar. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Teaching wisdom. God gave himself. There are angels there he could have given. Yes. He could have given probably not a king, the amount of the little angel. He didn't do that. And there's reason to that because really they cannot give us salvation. But God is a miracle. God you can change to do whatever you want to do. Is one that created the law, he can amend the law. That's what we call miracle. He can amend his own law. That's miracle. He can alter his own law to bring forth a, a, a miracle for us. He is God. He's the one that created it. He can change it. God has turned water, red sea, to water. That's miracle. They walk on the dry ground. It changed the law of nature. God changed time. The moon and the sun have to stop. You can say danger, but I'm going somewhere. somewhere I'm going somewhere here. God did not send angels, but he sent his own self. They is on self to us. Sometimes, saying sometimes, I said to myself, if God will give us his son, himself, really, the revelation is God himself that came in the form of man. Yes. In the form of man. And it became our propitiation. Himself, because all men have seen. God had to come in the form of man. But the only difference, he didn't carry man's blood. And he can't carry man's blood. Because man's blood is Adamic blood, contaminated. And he gave himself. I said to myself, if God gave himself, what else he cannot give us? And in the highest giver, he gave us the best. His best. So I want to challenge you to give 
God, God love a cheerful giver. If you are a cheerful giver, let's go to the next scripture. Then I will stop. Verse 8. God love a cheerful giver. And what is the blessing when you are a cheerful giver? And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. Who is he talking to? Everybody. The cheerful, cheerful giver. Some people give, but they're not cheerful. Not cheerful. They give, they give, they give, they just come grudgingly. Every time pastor say give, 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 there's no breakthrough yet. What's going on here? Be cheerful. Amen. It's coming. Amen. The love of Jesus. And he said, What? All grace is able to abound towards you. In all what? That means no lack. In how many things? Two things. May have what? Abundance. Of every good will. The Lord bless you as you give. Do you have your tithe, your offering? Let's give, wait to give on the screen. Those that want to give, amen. Everlasting life, CC, you want to give? You want to give online? Amen. Somebody need envelope, right? Or shall somebody need envelope? Sorry, today we have a divine order. Normally we do communion and so. Somebody else needs envelope. If you need envelope, if not, you want to give online. Everlasting life, CC. Everlastinglife.org. Slash give. Finance at everlastinglife.org. Also, Zell is there. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless you for what you have blessed us with. I ask you in the name of Jesus, as the saints bring their tithe, their offering, their seed, as a form of worship. But I pray that you will bless them exceedingly and let all grace abound towards them. In the mighty name of Jesus, in all sufficiency and in all things, so they may experience abundance. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless everyone that are given. Or those that don't have to give, bless them with a job that they too can partake in the giving and receiving. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Follow the direction of the usher from the back. Everybody say bless, 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 everybody say bless, 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 we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed in the, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed when we come, when we go.
you and keep you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance and the Lord give you peace. Let the peace of God that surpasses all understanding to guide your heart and to guide your mind in Christ Jesus. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Greet somebody before you go.